how Thor Ragnarok sets up Avengers Infinity War. Well, we're still feeling slightly hungover from getting hammered with Thor Ragnarok this weekend. So hungover that, yes, we're repeating puns from yesterday's Nerdist News. But as our Asgardian-sized buzz begins to wear off, it's time to put Ragnarok in the rearview mirror and start looking to the future. All the way to next summer when the Marvel movie to end all Marvel movies, or at least the Marvel movie to end Phase 3, finally finds its way to theaters. But in the meantime, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers! S spoilers! You got that? Avengers Infinity War hits the big screen May 4th, 2018, and it's poised to put a big bow on 10 years of cinematic storytelling that began all the way back in 2008 with the first Iron Man movie. Now there's one more MCU film on the horizon before we get to Infinity War, next February's Black Panther. But since that's the first solo outing of a still relatively unknown hero, we're guessing Marvel isn't gonna bog it down with loads of franchise building so audiences can better get to know the character on his own terms. So that means Ragnarok is probably the last bit of table setting before the big event. So we thought now would be the perfect time for an Infinity War refresher course. Let's begin with those six magical marvelous MacGuffins, the objects everyone will be going to Infinity War over, the Infinity Stones. Now they've been floating around the MCU forever and it can be tough to keep track of all of them. So let's review. The Reality Stone is still in the Collector's Collection. The Power Stone is in the custody of the Nova Corps. Vision is using the Mind Stone to literally power his mind. And you can only check out the Time Stone if you have a library card for Kamar Taj's library. The Space Stone is in the possession of Loki, but probably not for long. And the Soul Stone is... Well, we're not really sure where the Soul Stone is. We may have had a few small assumptions about it in the past, like that we were definitely 100% certain that it would show up in Ragnarok. So there you have it. One final Infinity Stone to be found before the MCU goes to Infinity War, and we're pretty sure we know exactly where it is and where it's going. And honestly, when have we ever been wrong before? But Ragnarok came and went without a Soul Stone to be seen. Now to be fair, we made those guesses when we thought Infinity War would start off with the stones all in one place so we could just actually jump into the Infinity War when the movie started. But now we know from the Russo brothers that Infinity War is actually going to be more of a heist film following Thanos as he grabs each stone. So now it seems very intentional that they're keeping them all separate for the structure of that story. And the reveal of the Soul Stone is probably gonna be some kind of big third act surprise. Maybe even the thing that evens the playing field a little bit when Thanos has gathered the other five and all hope seems lost. But regardless, there are currently six stones out there, which we're guessing means five or six big action set pieces as different groups of heroes try to defend them. Now, as we already pointed out, Loki pretty clearly grabbed the Tesseract on his way out of Asgard, and since we see Thanos' ship intercept him and Thor in the Ragnarok post credit scene, it seems likely one of the first big scenes will be Thanos snagging it from him. The only question is if he'll have to fight Loki for the stone or if Loki could just turn it over willingly. Either way, that D23 trailer where Thor ends up unconscious on the windshield of the Milano means whatever happens, it doesn't end well for the God of Thunder. We also know that Thanos will be bringing his minions into battle, and from a structure standpoint, it seems to make sense that we'll see one or two of them deployed to capture each stone. Our own Dan Casey has previously schooled us on the children of Thanos, so here's a quick rundown. The children of Thanos. First of all, they're not actually his kids. They're more like his disciples, like how Magneto has his acolytes or Lady Gaga has her little monsters. So no, Thanos is not paying child support for four little villains he's reared. Maybe just the two no longer villains we already know about, Gamora and Nebula. Instead, the children of Thanos, aka the Black Order, are major fans and followers of the big guy and help him carry out his bad guy goal of enslaving the galaxy. And we know, or at least can make a pretty darn good guess from the statues unveiled at D23 a few months back, that four of the five members of the Black Order will be making their way from comic book pages to the big screen in Infinity War. Namely Corvus Glaive, Proxima Midnight, Ebony Maw, and Black Dwarf. So there we have four bosses who could be sent out by Thanos to obtain the Infinity Stones before the final showdown with Big Boss Thanos when all 72 characters of this film will be on the screen at the same time. Or at least that's how we're fully expecting it'll go down. Probably more like 82 or 92, but for sure no less. But what do you guys think? Do you think the Black Panther movie is hiding an Infinity Stone? Was there enough Marvel mythology in Ragnarok? And where could that pesky soul stone be hiding? Let's discuss. Now, if you haven't noticed by now, I am not Jessica Chobot. I am Steve Zaragoza. Jess is currently abroad attempting to find the fourth of her seven Horcruxes. But until she gets back, you can check out the latest episode of Musk Watch. Dan and Kyle have a brand new episode of where Elon Musk might cross over with Rick and Morty. Be sure to like and subscribe and keep checking Nerdist.com.